that was maybe kind of used a bit more for, for chamber music, for filling the gaps. It was maybe not as vibrant, even though it has vibrant possibilities, but somehow in the, when the violin is more, um, how do you say, it's more self-explanatory. You hear it as first and um, it's very easy to, to, to do a sort of voice for it. And then, but for my theory is actually that the violin started first as a solo instrument and then around 18th, 19th century, actually the cello started growing and then 20, 21st century is our, our time. It's our time now. <laughs> 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 I, I, I mean, the, the times that I just for fun took the violin, it's definitely it feels very different to play and it's a, it's a different profession. So f for me also, you can hear when a violinist plays viola, you hear the violin timbre and um, when, yeah, when violist takes the violin also, it's like <laughs> everything is too easy. So yeah. absolutely, it, it is a different instrument, different technique, different approach to the string, to the overtones, to the sound uh, intonation, of course, mm. is, yes. So my, my, my grandfather was primarily a composer mm. and my father is primar primarily a viola player and then sometimes he has inspiration and composes. <laughs> yes. Did you study with your dad? When you were very small? Uh, when I was very little, yes. I Actually, I started with my grandmother from my mother's side, who was a, a child pedagogue. Uh, she played also in the Mex Mexican National Orchestra uh, and still is a, a child uh, pedagogue. And she was the best teacher for children because she would make a game out of it. You, you, you weren't aware that you were learning, which is the best kind of learning. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then a bit later on, I also had uh, a little bit lessons with my parents, but somehow they let me go my own pace and they somehow didn't push it. And uh, actually, I really started getting inspiration to actually practice myself when I was around 11, 12, when I actually picked up the viola. My hands were big enough to play the viola. And I remember that moment when like this viola case opened and there was this little, very cute, viola and kind of midday uh, sunlight falling on this viola <laughs> and this feeling of yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. so you started with the violin for actually the I very did. pragmatic reason just that it was a better fit for your tiny five-year-old hands it was yes. as simple as that yeah yes yes uh, i mean there are some small violas also but but they they're not very motivating um mm. uh, they don't really so sound i mean a violin also when you start it not the most motivating <laughs> feeling, <laughs> but the viola even less. <laughs> well, dan dance is a very important part of my life. I've always danced as a small child, also I've always done ballet, and uh, actually I, I always loved, but I was al always watching ballet, going to ballets, and uh, I knew all the things you should know <laughs> as a child uh, and I was completely in love with it and there was actually even a little moment where I started thinking if I wouldn't want to actually professionally go into that and thank god I didn't because now I can enjoy what I do and eat but I still really love ballet and um, I um, still dance myself, uh, sometimes a little bit ballet, but I went into tango. And it fits a lot into the music, of course, because I mean, movements and energy, uh, it's all primarily the, the, the what you need for dance and it fits music incredibly. I was born in Mexico City and I lived there the first seven years of my life and I always went back. Uh, my grandparents from my mother's side still live there and my uncle and so when I go home I go to Mexico City mm. and I've always, this was a project that has always been a, a wish mm, to do 
because I grew up with these, you know, Latin American boleros with, um, I don't know, the, the, the trios and well, mariachis, of course, but uh, also like Agustin Lara or Pedro Infante is an important singer in Mexico. Or, well, many, there are many, many. And uh, for me, that's the atmosphere of my childhood. So mm -hmm. this, the first smells, the first um, sounds, for me, is these boleros. And uh, so basically, this project is very special because there are uh, a few amazing arrangers who have are willing to, to do these arrangements, who have already done them, and who know this music very well. Um, so I think it will be a very interesting journey. And the instrumentation will, will be quite interesting also because it will be without singer, it's just in the instrumentals of these beautiful melodies, and it will be with trumpets, percussion, piano, uh, double bass, viola. So it will be a very unusual kind of, I still don't know where it will Oh, but I'm sure it will be sort of mariachi elements almost. There, yes, some of that there, is some, that. there is no viola in mariachi, but we will make it happen <laughs> in the 21st yeah. century. <laughs>